I have here a MacBook and an iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard. They are both portable devices, each with a display, a keyboard, and a mouse. One has full desktop apps and the other has different use cases and built-in connectivity. You could make a case either way for which one is the best portable computing device. Speed and size aside, they're both incredible devices, but which one is the best mobile experience? Let's find out. Hey, I'm Jerry, and I recently bought this MacBook Pro, my first Mac in seven years. But for the last year and a half, I've been using my iPad Pro for just about everything, including logging into work stuff, personal browsing and shopping, even video creation. I bought the MacBook to try and relearn Mac OS and just see how they interact together. Honestly, I probably just bought it because I was bored. But since I started using the MacBook, I found that they each compete for my time on the couch. So I need to know which one is the better mobile device. Just to clarify, this is going to be a comparison about which one is the best mobile device, assuming you have another computer. So think about on the couch, in a coffee shop, or traveling, like when we used to do in the before times. I said they both have a display keyboard and mouse, so let's start there. Both devices have now what Apple calls the Magic Keyboard. They offer the same typing experience overall with good key travel, solid feel, and a pleasing sound and layout. Apple has spent the last eight or nine months replacing the universally panned butterfly keyboard in all of its devices. And although I'm not a keyboard snob, I really do like the feel of both of these keyboards. I don't seem to get tired typing on them. And it's nice that going from one to another does not require mental adjustment. The MacBook obviously has an escape key and a touch bar, which replaced the normal function and media keys. Apple is a few years in, and I don't think I have seen anyone say how much they love the touch bar. Most people just live with it and it's whatever. Compared to the iPad though, the touch bar makes it easier to interact with some apps or adjust things like brightness and volume, whereas the iPad Magic Keyboard lacks those additional functions. The trackpads on these devices are a bit different. The trackpad on the iPad Magic Keyboard is a bit more cramped than I prefer. And instead of the force touch fake clicky thing on the MacBook, the iPad Magic Keyboard has a physical mechanism, but at least you can click it anywhere. Both trackpads are, of course, multi-touch for scrolling on a web page or navigating the UI. I haven't quite gotten used to the gestures introduced in Mavericks, but I think I like the iPad Magic Keyboard gestures better. For example, on the iPad, a three-finger swipe takes me home or to the multitasking window. On the Mac, it takes you to Exposé, which is fine, but it would be better if it was just as simple to clear all the windows and show me just the desktop. By now you are aware of the cursor in iPadOS being different from macOS. It's a round orb that changes shape depending on the space it's in and snaps to areas on the interface. On the Mac, it is the same pointing device that you know and love. On the iPad, it feels laggy at first as it snaps to icons on the home screen or buttons in Safari, but once I got used to how it works, I started to enjoy it. For heavy text manipulation beyond surfing and casual email, the Mac cursor is better. The last thing around mouse and trackpad support on the iPad and MacBook is scrolling. If you scroll down the page and hit the subscribe and like buttons, you'll see the iPad scrolling just feels much smoother than it does on the MacBook. When scrolling on web pages or swiping between home screens, the iPad is just super buttery smooth. I thought that this had to do with the 120 Hertz refresh on the iPad Pro, but I get the same feeling on the base seventh gen iPad as well. Something is definitely different between scrolling on iOS and macOS. Both the iPad and the MacBook have great displays. Apple likes to call their displays retina displays because at a normal viewing distance, most people will not be able to see pixels. Apple's displays get nice and bright, though I think the iPad gets a little bit brighter. They both have good color calibration and they both offer extra features like true tone and night shift. For me, the displays would be a tie except for one thing, touchscreen. Yes, that age old adage about Apple not wanting touch screens on the Mac because it's not ergonomic has gone out the window since they had a keyboard dock for the very first iPad. How can you say it's fine to use a keyboard dock with an iPad and before mouse support, but that it was too stressful on the body to have a touch screen on the Mac? There are instances where it's easier, faster, or even more comfortable to reach up and adjust something on the screen with your finger. Maybe there's a technical reason that Apple hasn't added that. So it's possible with Apple Silicon, we could see launch of a touchscreen iMac, I don't know. Now, a lot of people may say that the Mac is better at multitasking and that an iPad can't replace a Mac until Apple changes that. Now, of course, the iPad has multitasking. You can run multiple apps in split view, let an app hover over and slide over and use picture in picture. But I know, Mac has real multitasking. I would argue that as a mobile device, the iPad works better because 
Do you know what you get with robust multitasking? Heat, fans, and battery drain. The iPad runs very cool nearly all the time, but it can get a little warm doing something like rendering video. The iPad Magic Keyboard, however, does not. I can put the iPad through its paces while sitting on my lap and never feel any heat. I do things like have Netflix in a picture in picture window, browse the web and take notes all at the same time without fans kicking on and ruining my battery life. If I try to render a video on the MacBook with it sitting on my lap, I basically will toast my legs and that's no fun. You also don't need a whole bunch of background tasks running on a mobile device like iStat menu, cloud syncing tools, third-party apps, checking for updates or whatever. By using a device without unneeded processes and without a fan kicking on when multitasking between apps, you can get better battery life overall. As a reminder, we are talking about these devices as mobile devices when you already have another computer. So as a mobile device, internet connectivity is pretty important. With both macOS and iPadOS, you have the ability to tether to the internet of your phone and that works well, but having the option to get a cellular connection directly on the device is much more convenient. You never have to worry about weird Bluetooth issues, remembering Wi-Fi passwords, or flaky connections between the devices. It can always be there on and ready to go so you can go from sleep to surfing instantly. Yes, I know that there's an added cost for this, but to me, it's worth it. Well, before being at home 99% of the time, but I still have the ability to use it if I ever do leave the house. But what if you are in a place using your mobile device on your lap? Well, the Mac is going to work better on your lap based on the weight balance. The heavier base and lighter screen keep the MacBook steady on your lap with much less opportunity for it to fall forward. When using the iPad with Magic Keyboard on your lap, you have to be more aware of getting distracted and the potential for disaster, which almost happened to me, as you can see on my five best and worst things about the iPad Magic Keyboard video that I did before. But hey, with that thin and light screen on the MacBook, you also get a thin and light camera, which is to say, terrible. The 720p camera on the MacBook cannot hold a candle or properly light one compared to the iPad. Taking video calls away from your desk is much more pleasant when the people on the other side can actually see you well, even if it does not look like you're looking at them. But if you want to see them well, you may need to adjust your screen to a different angle. The iPad Magic Keyboard has a decent range of motion for adjusting the screen, even though a lot of reviewers said it wasn't enough, but the MacBook does eke out a win in the screen range of motion. Also needed for video calls or speakers and a headphone jack. Both have good or even great speakers, but only the MacBook will have a headphone jack for a regular 3.5 millimeter set of headphones. Bluetooth is a great option for some things, but sometimes a wired set will give you the best performance, like editing audio where latency needs to be considered. I personally now use AirPods for almost everything and the lack of headphone jack is not a deal breaker for me. And if you want to cuddle up with your device and watch a movie or pick it up to show someone something funny on the web, only the iPad can detach from the keyboard, offering a completely different user experience. And because of the touch screen we talked about earlier, this ability allows for artists or creatives to draw, write, edit, or just about anything in a more natural way. I mean, look at this thing. This thing just pops on and off, super simple. You can use it with or without the keyboard, whatever you're more comfortable with at whatever time. So when I look at the MacBook and the iPad as a secondary mobile device, I think the iPad has more of the qualities that I want in a mobile device with its included cellular connectivity, a great video call experience, simpler interface, and in my experience, better battery life. For some people, they will not be able to give up a full laptop and may be able to reason why they need full desktop experience on the go. For me, the iPad works well as my primary device, if not my only device. If you like to use your iPad on the go, but are looking for ways to make it more laptop-like, you should definitely check out this video over here about making your iPad more like a laptop. If you enjoyed this video or have a different opinion, let me know below and I'll see you next time.